So with that said, you know, I like to describe kernels and uh, convolutions and the concept of a big matrix and a tiny matrix. So this big matrix here, this is your input image. These are assumably a single channel grayscale image and these pixel values in, in gray, these are the individual pixel intensities of, of the image. This red area here, this is your tiny matrix. This is your kernel. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna position the center of this kernel on top of a pixel and you're gonna slide left to right and then top to bottom one pixel at a time. And at every stop of this sliding window, you're gonna take the values here. So this is your kernel value, the values, negative one, negative two, negative one, zero, 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 positive one, positive two, positive one. You're gonna take these nine values and you're gonna do an element wise multiplication with the values behind it. And once you've done the element wise multiplication, you're gonna take the sum just as we did in this previous example. So in this example, we add our arrays equal to the A and B equal to the same values just for the sake of this example. But here A would be equal to the values in the foreground, the, mate, the kernel, and then B would be the values equal to the pixels in the background, the gray values behind the kernel. You take an element wise multiplication and you take the sum. So what does this look like? What does a kernel actually look like? Well, they're always odd odd values. So kernels can be of arbitrary size, m by n, provided that both m and n are odd integers. So why, why would you use an odd integer? Why not an even integer? Well, to explain that to you, let's take a look at this 3 by 3 kernel and then this 2 by 2 matrix. This is a, a valid kernel here because we can specify the center value. It's indexed at x equals 1, y equals 1. But here, there is no center kernel. I mean, I guess you could say it exists at x equals 0.5 and y equals 0.5, but since we're working with integer data, that doesn't make any sense. We can't interpolate what the center of that kernel is going to be. So that's why you always see kernels with odd values. You want to be able to have this, this center, the center value. In terms of what a kernel actually looks like, here is an example of a kernel used for average blurring. We have the matrix initialized with all ones, there's nine of them, it's a three by three matrix. And then we multiply these values by one over nine. So one, effectively this multiplication means that once we're complete, this entry is one divided by nine, this is one, by, one divided by nine, this is one divided by nine, and so on. So for any given pixel intensity here, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna compute the average of the surrounding neighborhood of pixel values and then store that in an output matrix. So let's look at, at a worked example. There are three components that we need. We have an input image. We have this kernel matrix, the tiny matrix that we're gonna apply on top of the larger image. And we have this output array that's going to store the output of the image convolved with the kernel. And the convolution process is actually really simple. So keep in mind, we're sliding from left to right and top to bottom one pixel at a time. So we're gonna stop at our current X, Y coordinate in the original image. We're gonna place the center of the kernel at this x, y coordinate. Then we take the element wise multiplication and then sum the values together. And then using the same x, y coordinates from step one, so the center, center region, but this time store the kernel output in the same location as the output image. And this will make sense in just a second. Let's say here that we have this output region, i sub j. So this is the output x, y coordinates. And then we have this blurring kernel right here, because we're doing some averaging. This region right here is the input ROI, the three by three input region of the image where our kernel stopped at. So what we do then is that for each element in that matrix, we're gonna multiply by one divided by nine. So one ninth times 197, one ninth times 50, etc. That creates, after the matrix multiplication is done, we get these nine values out, which is just the the process of doing this multiplication. We sum all of that together and that equals 126. So that means for the output array zero at the pixel located at ij, that value will be stored as 126. And you do that for every single pixel inside the image. So again, going back here, keep in mind, convolution works by taking a kernel and taking an input image, placing the center of the kernel on top of a pixel, sliding from left to right, top to bottom, et cetera, all the way through this process. That's all there is to it.
of course, like there's ways to optimize this process using, you know, linear algebra libraries. Um, and if you're training a deep neural network, you'd be using your GPU and that these filters would be learned automatically. But the concept of convolution is pretty simple when it's explained to you.